If it's not feasible, all it's going to do is stress you out. That's it. Trust me. Either something is feasible or it's not. That's it. It's, it's so funny. One of my clients, he, um, he has a very, very demanding job. We constantly talk about the abundance of priorities you have when you're getting older. So I could have um, programs that I promised I was going to give clients. I could have my workout I want to get in. I could have the, the projects that I'm working on. I could, have, like, I could have a list of 10 things that are equally as important. So now getting the, getting the protein that I was told was the right amount may not be feasible in the grand scheme of my day. It just may not. So all that's going to do is stress you out. Yo, thanks for locking in and welcome to the Gym Life Podcast. You are rocking out with Jima, holistic health coach, certified personal trainer, and co-founder of the gym downtown LA, established in 2016. We are going on our eighth year, and I also want to celebrate the release of our new mobile application, but we'll get into all that. Today, what I wanted to talk about was the abundance of information that is out there and how to kind of sort through it. It's one of my favorite topics to address. And mind you, by the, by the way, today I'm gonna to be doing a lot of stretching. Had a crazy week of workouts, proud of myself. Did a light workout this morning. So today is gonna to be more of a recovery. So feel free to follow along with the stretches. So now in this abundance of information, the one concept that I wanna kind of drive home today and hope y'all grasp and take with you is the idea of less answers and more questions less answers and more questions. Completely abandon the idea of reaching a space where everything makes sense and you get it all. Because even when that space happens, your body is gonna change, your ideas are gonna change, your emotions are gonna change, right? So let's kind of break this up into three categories. I started with the adductor stretch, now I wanna get the hamstrings. So let's break this down into three categories. I think these are three of the most prominent categories that I've noticed in terms of that I get questions about and in terms of what my clients look for in research. One is what to eat. That's huge. And there's so much information and so many sources of information as far as what to eat. The second category is relationship advice. And not just romantic relationship, it's friends, family, even sometimes acquaintances, coworkers, right? Um, the third is stress management, all right? So let's go over those three again. We have food, nutrition, the second is relationships. The third, we're talking about stress management. So now you have these three categories that I think are excessively searched, but I, I really believe we have the wrong idea or the wrong intention when we're seeking out this information. It's looking for information to somehow bring us to a conclusion that everything makes sense and now I feel better. Instead of looking for information to help us ask the right questions of ourselves. I'm going to explain that, go through and get a little bit deeper into that. Example, client will call me and they could have an issue as far as lower back pain, right? I have lower back pain. What should I do? I'm always going to respond to that with more questions. I think anytime you seek professional advice and somebody begins to give you answers without asking more questions, they're giving it based on information that they've already acquired but may, may not be applicable to you, okay? So now let's say, after asking a bunch of questions, I tell them, you know what, it sounds like your QL, quadratus lumborum, is tight and it's, you know, it's, it's causing a misalignment within your hips, within your spine, you should maybe go to physical therapy, right? So now I gave them an answer. Once they get that information, I always think two things should be applied once you get, a, get some information that you believe is an answer. Is one, is it feasible? Is it feasible for me to go seek out a physical therapist? Can I afford one, right? Second, is it in alignment with my truth? What if I tell them they have a tight muscle, but through a bunch of research and information they've gathered on their own, they may not think that is true. It's not saying to be dismissive of the information that I've given them, but to take into account that 
it may not be applicable to them, right? So the two things that you always want to apply to a set of information that you get when it's when it could be an answer is one, is it feasible for me to do? And two, is it in alignment with my truth? Like those, those two things should always be applied. Now, we're gonna go through these three categories today. We're gonna plug through them and hopefully it'll teach you how to ask the right questions. Let's start with nutrition. Depending on what your goal is, okay? That's, which, is which is very big, depending on what your goal is. Stretch the chest out. Um, nutrition advice has like, when I mean to tell you layers upon layers of complexity and not complex in the sense where it's hard to figure out what to eat, it's hard to figure out what to eat for you and that's gonna be time. So one thing I always, and I'm gonna dive right into protein, um, not to pick on my mom and I've, I've probably told this story before, I tell this story all the time, where for me, four days out of the week, I have a plant-based diet, okay? During those four days, I usually try to get my protein from the right combinations of plant-based foods, whether it's um, a grain and a bean or the right vegetable that's very nutrient dense and has a lot of protein, but different ways. Then let's say Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is when I'm gonna get it through um, fish, sometimes chicken, um, those are mainly my two sources, eggs. I try to make sure I'm pretty um, researched on, on where this is coming from. I like these grocery stores that are like straight from the farm. I know where their products are sourced from. So I try to look there and, and, and get that. So all that is backstory to the conversation. I'm talking to my mother. Um, she's like, where are you? Um, I said, oh, I'm, I'm at this restaurant, grabbing some food, tell her what I'm eating. She says, well, did you get enough protein? And say, oh dear God, what, what's what's enough protein, Ma? Ma, what's enough? <laughs> what's enough protein? Um, you, you you have to have uh, sixty. It's like okay, so I think we've all been there where it's these hardcore, well researched, well accredited professionals that'll come out and say you want to get anywhere from sixty to seventy grams of protein, anywhere from hundred grams of protein, depending on who you're getting the information from. That information always varies. You should get this amount of protein. I'm not even getting, I'm just, and I want you to use protein as a, sort of like an analogy for any other bit of information you could get, okay? So now you spoke to a professional, a nutritionist, a dietitian, or you've gone on your favorite podcast and this well-researched um, doctor, Whoever it is has given you this information as far as, okay, you should have this much protein. Now, what are the two questions? Is it feasible? If it's not feasible, all it's gonna do is stress you out. That's it. Trust me, either something is feasible or it's not. That's it. It's, it's so funny, one of my clients, he, um, he has a very, very demanding job. We, constantly talk about the abundance of priorities you have when you're getting older. So I could have um, programs that I promised I was gonna give clients. I could have my workout I wanna get in. I could have the, the projects that I'm working on. I could, have, like, I could have a list of 10 things that are equally as important. So now getting the, getting the protein that I was told was the right amount may not be feasible in the grand scheme of my day. It just may not. So all that's going to do is stress you out when you've heard you should be having <laughs> you should be having 70 grams of protein, 18 grams of protein. And now here you are, you work, you bogged down and you got your little calculator and you've only had 20 and you're stressing. Trust me, the stress that you acquire from trying to reach that amount of protein that you think you're supposed to have when it's not feasible isn't worth the benefit you're going to get from the protein. Trust me. Trust me. It's not going to be that. Right. So, is it feasible? Second, is it in alignment with my truth? Take a look at your history. You may have, be like, you know what, have I tried? There may have been a time in your life you've gotten that amount of protein, or you've been able to, and it didn't feel good. You've given it an ample amount, an ample amount of time to test it out, okay? You've gone, you've 
you um, did the 80 grams or 100 grams or whatever the amount is that you were suggested and you just didn't feel good. You felt bloated. You didn't digest because you know it wasn't taken into consideration. The level of activity. You're telling me the same amount of protein for a bodybuilder should be for somebody who goes on walks every day, for be, should be for somebody whose genetics are different, their, bio, their, their biology. All these things could be different, but you're going to tell me it's all the same amount of protein. It's not. So in addition to feasibility, we always want to address, is it in alignment with my truth? That is huge. Okay. So like I said, protein is just, we're just using that as an analogy for every bit of information you could get. Now, second thing is when we're talking about carbohydrates, we're talking about fats, how much should I have? Every, it's so funny how each macro <laughs> <laughs> has its own like stigmatization. Right? Protein has its own identity, um, its own talking points. Carbohydrates has his fats. When all of them should just be a starting point for you to kind of discover what's in alignment with you. If there's one thing that I could say is that you have to learn how to use your body as your own personal laboratory because only you are going to care enough about what you put in there. OK, so now when we're told what carbohydrates do, what protein does, I would say giving yourself at least one week, maybe two weeks of trying out what's feasible and then seeing if it's in alignment with your truth. OK, I like to start with balance, always balance. So my plates are, let's say for the sake of this conversation, one third of each macro. One third protein, one third carbohydrates, one third fats. OK, um, fruits and vegetables go in whatever whatever I want to do. This is for me. I'm not saying this is for you. I'm saying this is for me. That's my starting point. Now, because I've done so, re so much research with my body, there are certain times that I have felt, oh, you know what? I feel like I'm getting too much protein or I'm getting too much carbohydrates. Right. So when that happens, I adjust my plate. Because one week it could have worked for me, the next week it may not. Now, what are my checkpoints? My checkpoints are how well I'm performing, where's my energy level? If you want to use a checkpoint that I think is a great indicator of whether or not something is working for you, it's where is your energy? Now we're going back to more questions, right? Where is my energy during the day? Um, am I having that midday crash? It, when 12 o'clock rolls around, when 1 o'clock rolls around, when I get up in the morning, am I sluggish? Then you want to start looking at your stress. You want to start looking at your, um, your, your exercise. You want to start looking at your nutrition and start seeing where you can make adjustments. So a great starting point is always where is my energy? The second, if you're a person who works out consistently, is how much do you have doing your workouts? Is your muscular endurance there? So what I'm going through, my chest presses, my pull-ups, my push-ups, whatever it may be, do, am I getting through it at the same capacity that I was the week before? OK, so now your energy levels during the day, how well you're doing, it, how well you're doing during your exercise. That's big. And then three, how well are you sleeping? I mean, for me, if I have protein too late at night, my sleep sucks. I don't know what it is. Well, I do have an idea what it is. But for me, it, it rings true. Some people eat protein nighttime. They're fine. OK, so the, those are the three things that you could always check. Where is. Where's my energy during the day? Am I feeling sluggish? Two, where is my, where's my work capacity at during my workouts? Am I able to bang on my, am I going on my runs, lifting my weights, all those things? Um, back to the adductor stretcher, all those things present. And then of course, how is your sleep? So as you get this information, especially as it relates to nutrition, ask yourself, is it feasible? And is it in alignment your, with your truth? And when you're finding out if it's in alignment with your truth, that's another subset, another uh, subcategories you could use as far as where is your energy? How am I sleeping? How am, where is my capacity during my workouts? Right. Is it in alignment with my truth? Next, we're going to, let's say, relationships. I think <laughs> and I love it, truly, where <laughs> I remember and I, I always stay away from like relationship um, uh, stories. Right. But this one. It's, it's pretty broad. It's pretty general. But I remember I was in a relationship before and we were having a conversation and she said to me, 
okay, this is what, this is the advice I got. Why is it not working with you? I'm like, what? I, I'm confused. <laughs> He's like, so in other words, she had either read a book or listened to a podcast in how to handle our conversation and was confused why I wasn't working. I'm like, because they don't know us. Like, they don't know. It's, it's, it's weird that like, we would think that we would just get this information and apply it to another human and then all of a sudden it will work. So I think that is very important when we're listening to, and I'm going to digress and come back for a second. Um, I'm big into sports. You guys watch basketball. You watch football. Michael Jordan, you know, 6'6", you know, long arms, can palm a basketball. If he starts giving advice, it's going to be very difficult to take that and apply that to me if I'm starting out to play. But he has a list of attributes I don't have. Not meaning I couldn't get to where he is if I'm, you know, if I'm a young basketball player. But what I want to do is I got to figure out my puzzle. My puzzle is different from his puzzle. Two very different things. Now, we'll go back. Somebody could say, well, you know, in a relationship, <laughs> if your boyfriend plays video games or if your girlfriend stays out late shopping or if this happens, then it means this. Eh. 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 More questions. Does that apply to me? Is that true? What that thing is indicating? Um, I'm going to digress for a second and come back. I tend to do this, but stay with me. One thing I've always been intrigued about or confused about is forming a conclusion about someone. We're talking about friends, family, any kind of relationship, forming a conclusion about what someone is thinking or feeling without asking them. Think, think about that for a second. Forming a conclusion about what someone else is thinking or feeling when you can go get the information from them. More questions, less answers. That's the theme of today. More questions, less answers. Now, it's not to say to go out and seek information and invite. I think that's insanely important. But what are the two things we're going to apply to that information? One, is it feasible? Two, is it in alignment with my truth? Is it feasible? Is it in alignment with my truth? If in, we all have different day-to-day -day lives. So if I'm a dude in a relationship, if I'm a woman in a relationship, and I get information, I can, I can pretty much have an understanding as to whether or not it's feasible for me to do. I can, I can figure that out. And that requires the work of trying to sort through the information and see if it's applicable to your attributes or not. Okay. The second part, always, as we're going through relationships, same thing as we're going through nutrition, is in alignment with my truth. If I'm a person that is outspoken, I'm not talking about rude or um, disrespectful, but if I'm a person who's outspoken and likes to express myself and I get a set of information that says, okay, well, maybe you want to start um, being a little less outspoken. Uh, eh. I'm not saying yes or no. I'm saying one, is it feasible? And two, is it in alignment with your truth? And I'm talking about healthy, being healthy and outspoken. That's very important. Now, one thing that I've learned and was part of research and everything and becoming a coach is that when we're dealing with relationships, friends, family, you know what's, what's interesting is within my coach and coach, coaching, I realize a lot of shifts in dynamic between adults as they get older and their parents, right? And now as an adult, you've established your life, you're mature now, you have your responsibilities, your discipline, whatever it is you have. And I think sometimes parents and kids kind of struggle with that dynamic. Um, Sometimes the parents are making assumptions about the children based on who they were when they were teenagers or 20 year olds. I realize like, no, these people are 30 now, 35, sometimes 40. And a lot of those things are just not true nowadays. So what I've learned through research and through um, my studies is to make sure we're asking questions within these disagreements or conflict within relationships that are drawing out sp very specific answers, okay? And when I mean specific answers is, let's say I am talking to a cousin that I grew up with and I'm super, super tight. And they say something like, you know what? Every time I call, you don't answer. 
okay, when has now, it's very, it's very important to not make these uh, questions condescending, but it's like, no, I need to know when you called. I need to know what happened. You, all these things are important because then now you can address the assumption or the generalization, right? So the, the, the generalization is, I never answer the phone. I never pick up. Well, okay, well, I need to know exactly when you're talking about because then maybe I can make an adjustment or I can give you more information or insight, okay? So I think even when we're talking about, my hamstrings are real tight this week. We're talking about relationships because we interact with that person more than anybody else in our lives, that's going to hold true even more where this person that you're with may have certain assumptions or certain conclusions, what we want to do is kind of draw specific, specific information by asking more questions. Next, remember we had three, nutrition, relationships, and stress management. I think stress management is one of the most underrated and overrated, or I should say, uh, yeah, underrated and overrated um, topics that is within health and wellness, that's us constantly seeking a way to manage stress, to manage the day-to-day -day demands that happen in our lives um, without understanding that certain tensions are just supposed to exist. We will go and look towards meditation, right? Long walks, I've, I've seen these all the time. It's so funny how our, um, our Instagram feeds kind of give us a story of, <laughs> of what we tend to look at. My Instagram feed is filled with like wellness talks and um, philosophical quotes. And one of, the, one of my favorite ones that I think is just is very interesting is like, what to do when you feel depressed? Go on a walk, um, meditate, take a deep breath. You're already, listen, listen, less answers, more questions. Let's, I, I really, this one I really want, I need, you can see I even stopped my stretching to really emphasize this point. I am sitting down in a space. I do not feel good because let's assume it's due to a certain set of external factors, things that have happened to me that make me feel upset, make me feel sad, make me feel depressed, whether, you know, depression, whether it's a state or feeling whatever, whatever, let's, let's just fall on, focus on not feeling good. There is not going to be an answer that brings me out of that space. It's going to be a question, a, a dive into ourselves that is going to organically bring us out of that space. You, I do not think if I'm upset, I feel down about where I'm at in life, whatever it is, that me going down and sitting down um, and meditating <laughs> for an hour is going to all of a sudden bring me out of that space. No, 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 no. First, it's... I think having the understanding that feelings come and go and observing those feelings and questioning those feelings and diving into them and, you know, being curious, all those things, because now once you have an understanding of that, you know how to make a relationship with that stress. OK. And anybody who's listening to me knows that I talk about the importance of the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system, which all that means is our body is not designed to be in constant spaces of stress because what does it do? It interrupts digestion. It interrupts our ability to burn fat. All these things that are interrupted, cortisol levels, all these things that are interrupted and all these factors that are counterproductive to our health happen when we are stressed out. If we start searching for the magical answer to take the stress away or take the depression away, it's going to constantly lead us to, I think, one of two things, right? One is that we're wondering why the hell it won't work. We're over there, well, I, I, I meditated, I went on a walk, I, I breathed, I did all these things and, and nothing happened. Or it actually works and you think that that's the answer, that the answer isn't in you. So now what happens? Let's just, let's just draw out this, this, um, this hypothetical situation where I'm depressed, I all of a sudden feel like me going to yoga meditation class at 7 p.m. every night is what brings me out of that depression. Like, I've come to this conclusion. This is it. So now I go there. I get out of work. And then all of a sudden, my work schedule shifts or certain demands happen and I can't make it there. And I think it's that class that does it. Or it's me 
getting to a meditation pillow, whatever it is, and that doesn't happen. Now we're like, I can't, I can't. You see? So even when you think you've gotten, you still haven't gotten it. Versus if you take the question approach, why am I feeling this way? How did I get there? What in my past, what circumstances have I felt before? What insecurities do I have? Like these are all the questions. So now what I suggest is when you're getting all this information from these different podcasts, from these different professionals, when you're talking to a therapist, have that information be your guide to ask yourself the right questions. This is when we're talking about stress now. When they say you need to do this, you need to do that, these are different causes of stress. You go, like, oh, wow, that, that kind of resonates with me. That resonates with me. That makes sense. Now, these are the things that can put you on that pathway to ask, ask the right questions. And what I've found is it is very tough to be stressed out while you're doing research, if you're doing it the right way. If you're sitting there saying, you know what? Why did I get here? Why did I do this? Why do I feel this way? Why did I aggravate? You asking these questions, naturally, when you're in that space of curiosity, it kind of has the stress subside a little bit. It kind of goes away. Nutrition, relationships, stress management. Nutrition, relationships, stress management. Seek out as much information as you can that's comfortable for you. And as you're getting that information, is that information feasible to apply? Is it feasible for me to do these, to do these things, to, to, to apply this advice? That is insanely important. And then the second thing, is it in alignment with my truth? You have a lifetime of information. Make sure you use it when you're gathering this information from other professionals. Less answers, more questions.